Hi, I'm Art Wolf. For over 30 years, I've traveled across the globe, capturing images of the world's awe-inspiring places, cultures, and creatures. Along the way, I've been fortunate to have amazing encounters with the people and the animals that I've met. Whether photographing tigers from the back of an elephant or sharing tea with the holy sadhus in the city of Varanasi, each encounter touched me and reminds me of the beautiful diversity of our world. I hope they'll do the same for you. Join me for this special look at some of my favorite amazing encounters. Coming up next on Travels to the Edge. We've left the south forests of Nepal and traveled further south to the green heart of India and the jungles of Bandavgarh. Not only is Bandavgarh rich with wildlife, it's a sanctuary for Asia's last remaining Bengal tigers. Finding a tiger in a jungle is like a needle in a haystack. <laughs> There's a tiger right up here. It's just moving through the trees. Oh, there, there's two tigers right here. Tigers, wild Bengal tigers in India. laying down. I've got a partial view. It's really difficult to get a good view. This beautiful Bengal female is sitting behind some very fine lined bamboo. And so I'm going to shoot this animal within the context of its environment. The bamboo is every bit as important as the cat itself. This is fantastic. Look, he's just gonna get up. That's incredible. Oh, lay down and look at us. Oh, gee. So beautiful in this log. I love the natural relaxed behavior. When a tiger looks into your eyes, you never forget the moment. Wow, what a powerful cat. Just beautiful. This tiger keeps wanting to charge the elephant. Just to see the power and the, the stealth of these animals is amazing. Everywhere this cat goes, he looks great. Look at the eye spots behind the ears. And they're meant to really keep them from being attacked from behind by other animals like other tigers. And it just looks like he's staring right back at us. second most populated country in the world. And it's just amazing and it's a comfort to me to know that there are natural 
environments where the tiger still thrives. These are snow macaques, or Japanese macaques, also known as snow monkeys. These are adorable macaques that live in the very precipitous mountains of central Japan on Honshu Island. They have been habituated over the years. They're drawn towards the natural hot spring. They're the most northern primate on Earth, and they're the only primate that has learned to bathe. The story of the bathing began back in the 1960s when the young ones, which are naturally curious, got into the hot springs at a lodge down the valley. So many monkeys were coming into the lodge, it got to the point that the lodge put in this hot spring up the valley so that these monkeys would have their own hot spring. This little monkey is so adorable, and it's so curious. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, he's got a rock in his mouth. Oh, that's too cute. Oh, baby. Ah, oh, he even makes sound. It's like a squeeze toy. His eyes are so clear, and his little hands are so amazing. Oh, this is a nice shot. monkeys jumping across this rock. They're coming right over this snow-covered rock. Beautiful shots, getting him in mid-flight. Here goes one right now. I got three snow macaques right on the edge of this mountain stream. Just a conglomeration of fur and pink little faces. It's really adorable. It's how they survive in this very harsh environment is the ability to stay close together for warmth and security. Just as tight as three animals could possibly be. This is why I travel so much. Moments of intimacy like this really reward me. Not only am I getting some great shots, but it's also an excellent opportunity to witness behavior, just to see how these primates interact with one another, the play behavior, the aggression between babies, the scolding. <laughs> these are undoubtedly the cleanest monkeys in the world. As soon as low tide rolls around, the bears appear out of, out of nowhere. The bears know when low tide is. I don't know if it's by smell or just internal timing, but they, they're very in, in tune with the tides and the timing of the tides. Hallow is famous for its clam-eating bears. Off your 
bear right there's a bear over there and you can see behind her she's she started to dig there's piles where she's dug a hole and then moved on to the next one i think each hole's probably a clam what i really like about this shot is the simpleness of the landscape you can see all the claws the feet there's just nothing impeding our view of this beautiful bear and it's extraordinarily beautiful with the long golden fur just blowing in the breeze i love the background the light and the thing that i like the most is the fact that it's totally unaffected by our presence it's a very candid way of photographing a wild animal in a beautiful simple landscape Superbly equipped. It's a digging bear of all the seven species of bears. These are the diggers. He's got this great big hump, which is really a big hunk of muscle, and they've got extra long claws. If you compare a bear claw to a polar bear claw or a black bear claw, they're shaped differently, but they're meant for digging. This is a freshwater lake left over from a receding glacier. And in this lake are hundreds of young wieners, elephant seals that were formed probably a month or so ago. And they've been fed on very, very rich milk from their mothers. And now the mothers have gone out to sea to replenish their nutrients. But for right now, these pups are jousting and playing and just hanging out in this very benign water. Great shot. From about three feet away, wide angle. I've approached them from very low. They're curious animals. If you want to get unusual shots, you get into unusual positions. And by staying low, letting them look into my lens, they'll come right up. I get these distorted wide angles, which can often be fantastic. And I love these kind of perspectives, because if you just stand up from five feet up, looking 30 feet away, it looks like you're looking at these animals. And now I want to kind of interpret their landscape, interpret their environment. And you do that by getting into their environment on their level. These guys are known as wieners simply because they've been weaned from their mothers. And when they see somebody like me laying on the beach, they may in fact think I'm mother. So they come in close. And I just love this interaction with these wild animals. And I'm careful not to touch them. Hey. Come here. Come on, you want it, you want it. Oh, there we go. Now, he's so curious. Oh, is he gonna touch my lens? Don't touch my lens. Oh. Yeah, if you blow snot on my lens. Ah, oh, the 